I hate having to say this, but I, I messed up. I made a video recently comparing the new Rode Wireless Pro to the DJI Mic 2. And in that video, I made two, two fairly large mistakes. We're gonna go over, we're gonna go over the, what those mistakes were today and address some of your comments and questions from the, the comments below. You guys, you guys made some good points. You guys, it's possible you know more about these mics than I do. I'm back at the beach today, but today the waves are far larger. The wind is blowing far harder. So it'll be interesting to compare these two mics. Uh, once again, just kind of hear what does the Rode Wireless Pro sound like in extremely windy situation? And what does the DJI Mic 2 sound like in an extremely windy situation? Both of these microphones have dead cats on top. And I think you'll hear in this video, compared to my last video, that these microphones sound a whole lot closer to each other. The, the fullness of both of these microphones is now there. That's, that kind of gets us to, to the first thing that I messed up. And that first thing that I messed up is that the DJI Mic 2, by default, had the low cut filter turned on. I didn't realize that I didn't, whoa! Oh. I didn't realize that in the settings, if you go into the transmitter settings, you swipe down on the receiver, you go in there and in the transmitter settings under low cut, the DJI Mic 2 has the low cut turned on by default. I didn't realize that, so I filmed that entire comparison video with the low cut filter on the DJI Mic 2, which is why, which is why a lot of you were saying the Rode sounds much fuller, has more low tones, and the DJI sounds thinner and doesn't have so many low tones. Totally my fault. I mean, kind of DJI's fault, but what a low cut filter essentially does is it cuts the low frequencies. Now that's designed for things like rumble and like kind of those lower rumbly background tones. It does kind of clean up the audio in certain situations. You go in, in post and you can turn on a high pass filter, again in the microphones, also known as a low cut filter. But again, the result of that having been turned on by default and me not ever turning it off was that the Rode sounded much fuller. Now, if I go back and forth between these two microphones now and I do not tell you which microphone is which, I think in this scenario with the low cut filter turned on for the DJI, they sound quite a bit more like each other. I think if you don't have headphones on right now, there's almost no chance that you're gonna tell the difference between the DJI and the Rode Wireless Pro. But if you do have headphones turned on, I think that's when you're going to notice some difference in just the characteristics of the, the warmth and the different tones that both microphones have. And again, this is just, the, this is just a built-in mic on the top. In a lot of scenarios, you'd be using a lav mic plugged into the top, which, uh, which brings me to number two. A lot of people were asking, does the DJI have a lav? Like, do they sell their own lav? And the answer is, is yes. Yes, they do. This here is the lav mic for the DJI Mic 2 system. It has a little like swivel bit on it, comes with a wind foam screen, and notably comes with a 90 degree angle to go into the transmitter. That's to come in play here. Just to pop off the fuzzy, no twisting needed, plug in the lav, and now you should hear me through this lav mic. So even though this was maybe on my hip, the lav cord up my shirt, you would be able to hear me through there. Now the second thing that I got, I would say kind of wrong or mostly wrong, I got it wrong, was that I mentioned that on the Rode Wireless Pro, it has a locking adapter, which it does. It has like the screw type locking adapter that you see on like a lot of more high-end commercial sets. Those kinds of adapters are gonna lock in place so that if a, if your subject or the person that's wearing the lav or you wearing the lav pull on it accidentally like you have this on your hip and the cable gets pulled on it doesn't it doesn't unseat and if it unseats now you don't have audio so as long as that thing is all the way in there you're good to go okay now the 90 degree adapter that's a big deal because just just with the 90 degree adapter it gives you a lot of pull resistance if it was just a straight adapter and you pulled on it you're pulling just directly out from that that jack but a 90 degree adapter gives you a little bit of resistance but even better than that is underneath the clip is a little area for the lav mic to route through that gives you complete locked in lavability hang on let me let me do this real quick so now i have the the lav the 90 degree lav plugged in 
it does a little loop here. It goes underneath that clip and the clip now pins that cable in place. So if you had this on your side, you had it, and then this was to be pulled pretty much no matter how hard you pull, you're not gonna unseat this. Like if you give yourself a little extra loop like that, that's kinda the ideal rigging way that you do any sort of lob is give yourself a little slack, but it's pinned under there so that even if this starts getting pulled and pulled and pulled, that loop gets a little smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, this would be ridiculous if this is how you rigged your lob. But even at that point, now with that 90 degree adapter, this, no matter how hard you pull, you'll break your cable before you ever unseat your lob. So no, is it, a, is it a screw in locking adapter? No, but does this do the same thing? Does it completely protect you from this lob pulling out and not getting the audio that you think is being picked up here? Uh, yeah, it does the same thing, same idea just no, no screw adapter bit on there. And to those of you that, that mentioned this, that commented, it has a little slot below it, uh, thank you. Speaking of your guys' comments, let's go back to the desk. We'll talk more of your comments and your questions. Holy cow, was it windy at the beach? Okay, let's get to some of the questions that you guys had on the DJI Mic 2. One was, can you record internally to the transmitter while transmitting audio to your camera or Bluetooth device? And the answer is yes, you can record internally to these transmitters at all times. All you do is uh, press the record button on the side, that turns red and you are now recording. And then press it again to stop recording. Now, that's a decent way to use this transmitter. I'm always worried that I'm gonna like accidentally press that button. You do get haptic feedback. It vibrates a bit when I press it and vibrates a bit when I press it off. So maybe you might feel that like, oh, I pressed it and I accidentally stopped recording. So what I do works for me, maybe not for everybody, but I have it so that as soon as I take this out of the case, it begins recording and I cannot stop recording even if I press that button. And to set this up, I just go into my transmitter settings and I turn on record stop lock, turn that on and then auto record is on. So now I have those two settings turned on. That means that if my transmitter is in the case like this, the moment that I pull it out of the case, it's going to start recording and it will not stop recording until I put it back in the case. So even if it's on me, I'm pressing record button. I press the, the button if I try to turn off the transmitter. Oh, it does turn off if I try to turn off the transmitter, but the record button is completely disabled. So pressing the record button does not stop the recording. The only way to stop it if it's on me is by pressing and holding the power button to turn off the transmitter completely. And then the next question that I got was, is it easy to turn on and off that, that noise reduction? Some of you really liked the noise reduction and some of you really did not like how the noise reduction sounded, which is totally understandable. I think that it is applying like a general noise reduction. You can't change the amount of noise reduction it's applying. So for me, because I take all of this footage, I take all of this audio into post, I'm going to edit it. I'm almost never going to use that noise reduction feature. But in times when maybe I'm gonna take the transmitter, plug it into my phone and record something using this, and then I'm just gonna post it to Instagram right away, I don't want to have to try to do noise reduction on some app on my phone. So using that feature as a very consumer level noise reduction, it's gonna be helpful in a pinch. And it's also really simple to turn it on and off. All you do is while your transmitter's on, while you can do it while you're recording or while you're not recording, you just press the power button and that little light goes from green to yellow. So press it again, it now turns green. I am now recording, but I am not in noise reduction mode. And then if I press it, it now turns yellow and now I am in noise reduction mode. So it's super simple to do, go back and forth. And I would say fairly easy to determine which mode it's in. The, the green and the yellow in like bright conditions can kind of blend. You almost have to press it a couple of times to see the two side by side. Like if I was to just glance at it, I'm like, is that green or is that yellow? But if I press it and it changes, I go, oh, now I can for sure tell that's yellow. Press it again and I can see that it's back to green. And again, for most people that are gonna be taking their audio, taking their footage into post, I would say that noise reduction on your computer, being able to control how much noise reduction, do it, do it in post. But if you are somebody that just needs it quick and dirty, you're uploading to the internet right away without going through post, or maybe you're a total beginner and editing audio on your computer is a pain in the butt, um, it's pretty dope. 
Next up, a bunch of people mentioned no time code. I don't think this is a device aimed at people that are gonna be using time code. If you are somebody that's on set that's using like three and four and five cameras, or there's multiple, there's just a lot going on when you use time code. I have never needed time code. And if you are someone that needs time code, uh, this microphone is not for you. And the last one was, can you keep one paired to your pocket three and one paired to your receiver at all times while they're in the case? No, because this case is also a pairing device. So if for some reason your microphone, you pair it to some other device, you pair this, you take this one out, I pair this to a pocket three. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but when I'm ready to charge this thing back up, or when I wanna repair it to this receiver, I just put it in the case, I close this thing up, and when I reopen it again, these two transmitters will pair to this receiver. So if you charge it up inside the case and then you wanna use it with your Pocket 3 again, you will have to repair it to your, your Pocket 3. It's pretty simple though. There's just a button on the side. You press and hold that and you say yes, pair. And I think those are the main questions that came up kind of over and over again. I would say again, between these two systems, now when I have the low cut filter turned off, if you just listen to the transmitter audio, they're almost identical coming straight out of the, the transmitter and the lav setup. Again, the Rode has that, that screw in system. The DJI is relying on running the cable through the bottom so that you can't, either way, you're not pulling the lav out of these things. This guy has an easier to put on dead cat that I really, really like. I think the size of this guy, the weight of this guy, the system itself, like the DJI system, I just like better. I think this, the touch screen on here, being able to change my settings on the fly, just grabbing this out, being whoop, 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 all the touch screen stuff, that's super cool. The screen is on this side, so if it's on top of my camera, I can see it in front of me. But for most people, I think the, the design of this guy, the slimness, the size, like for most people, this is probably the way to go. What do you think though? Again, my bad for the whole low cut filter thing, my bad for the lav thing, not knowing that it had that little looping thing. And uh, yeah, I like your guys' comments. You guys you guys seem to know a lot about these things. So anything else that you know about them that I don't know, put them in the comments below. All right, I hate being wrong, but if I'm wrong, I will say that I'm wrong. I will, uh, I will see you soon. I try so hard not to be wrong I really researched the heck out of most things that I ever say on this channel, just because I hate having to come back on here and make videos saying I was wrong.